um, share those with you. We ask that you prepare your minds and your heart as we, um, as we are going to uh, remember our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ today. Amen. Our choir is here, and they're going to take us into worship. Good morning, good morning. Welcome to St. Luke Church of God in Christ. It's Sunday, July 3rd, the first Sunday of, the, of a new month, and we're excited to be here. Are you excited to be with us today? We thank you for joining us online. Our pastor is the one and only Bishop James Curtis Austin Sr. His lovely wife is missionary Vanessa T. Austin. Our church mother is Mother Dorothy Gibbs, and the entire St. Luke Church family is here today. Our choir is here. We're excited to lift up the name of the Lord Jesus. If you didn't know, we're located at 914 North Orleans, downtown Chicago, Illinois, and we invite you to join us anytime you're near the area. But today, we want you to tell your friends and family members, call them up and let them know. St. Luke is online this morning. They're about to give God some praise, and we thank you for joining us. Well, it's first Sunday, so we want you to get your elements prepared. We're going to celebrate communion today. This is the day that the Lord has made. We're going to give God some praise. And right now, I encourage you to say, let's all give thanks for the mercy of the Lord and do it forever.
Hallelujah. 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 God, first of all, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for how you brought us. Thank you for how you brought us through many dangers seen and unseen. Thank you for how you brought us. Thank you for every valley. Thank you for every mountain you brought us over. We just want to thank you for mercy that endureth forever and ever. It was your mercy that woke us up this morning. It was your mercy that started us on our way. It was your mercy that put joy down in our soul. It was your mercy that prevailed when nothing else could help. Thank you for goodness and mercy following us all the days of our lives. Thank you for the kind of mercy that forgives our sins, that cleanses us, that washes us, that makes us all that we need to be. And so, God, we enter into your gates with thanksgiving today. We enter into your courts with praise. We're thankful unto you, and we bless your holy name. And so, God, we ask that you'd move by your spirit today, that you'd break every yoke, that you'd break every fetter, set the captive free in the name of Jesus. Every burden that walked in here with us, God, help us to leave it at the altar. In the name of Jesus, we're praying today that you heal sick bodies, you heal troubled minds, you cause the devil to back up off of us. Let the blood prevail in the name of Jesus. Not only here at 914 North Orleans, but we pray for the saints on the south side. We pray for the saints on the west side. We pray for the saints in Europe. We pray for the saints in Africa. We pray for the saints all over the world. God, have your way. God, move by your spirit. God, get glory. Get on. We plead the blood. Come on, I need somebody to plead the blood in here. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Have your way, God. And we want to thank you. Thank you for victory. Thank you for healing. Thank you for dominion. Thank you for breakthrough. Thank you that God, you're working it out. So God, we commit ourselves to you. Have your way in every area of our lives. Thank you for healing us. Thank you for making a way. In Jesus' name, somebody give God a praise today. Hallelujah. 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 Let us read the Hallelujah, the Psalm of Covering. Amen. The Psalm of Covering. Hallelujah. 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 Let us begin. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wing shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that fly by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and 10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. 
There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. The word of the Lord is blessed. Stay in the secret place. today.
like that. God's on your side. Anybody excited about that? get excited about God being on their side you know we can't lose we can't lose when God's on our side they said God's gonna bless us and I'm excited about that you know each and every day that you're gonna win at the end of the day because God there is no failure in the Lord amen hallelujah God is on our side thank you choir Ooh. This, we actually have a choir here today Reminding us of God's goodness. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, anybody ready for the word of the Lord today? Amen. Amen. We've heard, we've heard the scriptures being read to us and prayers have gone forth. And we've, we've been covered with Psalm 91 and we've heard some good singing. But now it's time to hear directly from the word of the Lord. Amen. And our pastor is back today. The first lady is here. She's, uh, she's looking refreshed and renewed and uh, <laughs> no telling what God's going to do today, right? When you get your strength back, there's something about coming into the presence of the Lord. <laughs> so our pastor is here. Our choir is here, as I mentioned. They're going to come with a sermonic selection. And after they come, I want you to proceed to this pulpit, our own pastor, the prelate of Fifth Illinois Jewish Dictionese and the pastor of St. Luke Church of God in Christ, our own Bishop James Curtis Austin Sr.
Lord Jesus, we love you, we praise you, we magnify you, we honor you and adore you, we extol you and esteem you infinitely above all others because you're God. There's nobody like you, nobody besides you in all the earth. It is you who have made us and not we ourselves. We're your people, the chief of your pasture. So we enter into your gates with thanksgiving, into your courts with praise. We thank you and bless your name because you are so good. Your mercy is everlasting and your truth endures to all generations. And Lord, I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Have your way now. Let your will be done. Let your kingdom come. Your glory be revealed. Save to the uttermost, fill with your spirit, anoint for your service. Use us to your glory, bring healing to those who are sick and afflicted in their bodies, in their minds. Oh God, in their relationships, God just bless. Have your way and let your peace prevail and we'll love you and praise you forever. Thank you one more time. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Would you take hold of your textbook, the Holy Bible? and open it to Romans the 10th chapter, verse number 13. Romans the 10th chapter, verse number 13. God bless you choir, oh my Amen. God. Amen. We got a choir today, not an ensemble. My, 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 my. Welcome home. All right, all right, this is wonderful. We, after two and a half years, we trying to get back to something close to norm. God bless, God bless every one of you. My, 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 my. Thank you so much for your prayers as my wife and I traveled last weekend. And it was a blessing. We had a chance to minister last Sunday in Buffalo, New York, uh, to the bishop and his church family, whose church mother was one of the victims of the mass shootings. And... Uh, so it was like a timely trip. It's like uh, they, they were so happy that we came. I asked them, do many bishops come? He says, bishops don't usually come this far up north. Buffalo is northern New York. It's right at the border of Canada. It is so up north. It, he doesn't get a lot of visitors. So when we came, of course, that's a visitor that he doesn't get normally. And, and, and they were just so happy. They received us with such joy and such kindness. I mean, I wasn't expecting all of it. I went there to be a blessing. I took a gift with me to be a blessing to the Buffalo family. And I, and I gave it to him. I didn't go there to be blessed. I went there to be a blessing. They turned around and yet blessed me. So it was... It was uh, such kindness, and we pray for them. They're yet mourning. This is not an um, easy thing to get over. It impacts a lot of their lives. You think of the people who were lost, but that store is closed indefinitely. But that was the store that was convenient for us to go to. Are you with me? Our store is closed. The government is stepping in, trying to make accommodations to bus them to places where they can get food. Or, but it's not convenient. It's not the same. And so the families there, the, the people there are hurting, and we are praying that God will help them to overcome and give them victory. Amen? God bless you. I'm just thankful that I, my wife and I were able to to do some ministry there and, and uh, to encourage the people of the Lord. Yes. Um, so it is. I want to take you to Romans, the 10th chapter, the 13th verse. Romans 10, 13. What does it say? For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. All right. My subject is real simple, folk. Call Jesus, my friend. Call Jesus. What did I just say? God, quicken your word and give us understanding, and we'll love you and praise you forever. Thank God. Amen. Please be seated.
Acts, the second chapter, the 21st verse, says, And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Joel, the second chapter, verse 32. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord has said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. Sounds like the Lord wants to deliver us from something. Something that is uncomfortable for us. Something that is miserable. Something that is painful. Something that is leading to death. The Lord wants to save us so that we do not perish. Lord have mercy. And then you get to Zechariah, the 13th chapter, verse number 9. And um, I just found it interesting, this verse. And I will bring the third part through the fire. And will refine them as silver is refined. And will try them as gold is tried. Now, how, is that, how does that usually happen? In fire, right? In heat. It's uncomfortable. So everybody who wants to be comfortable all the time, you in the wrong pasture. Yeah, 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 yeah. Those who will live godly will suffer persecution. There's suffering that goes along with this. And if you suffer with him, then you will reign with him. See, you know the Bible, but when it comes your way, you act like you forget it. Don't you let the devil steal that word out of your heart. Just tell the devil, suffering is just a normal part of my existence. Yeah, you didn't want to say it. You didn't want to say it. But man that is born of a woman is a few days and not half full, but full of trouble. So uh, you got trouble preaching to you today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The reason I can preach to you is because I... I know what it's like to have trouble. Amen. Amen. Bill, it's so good to see you, man. Good to see you. You and your bride. God bless you. Uh, I tell you, trouble, trouble is all our ways. And sometimes we feel like we're being mistreated. And, and the Bible says, don't think it's strange when these fiery trials come upon you. Just don't even think it's strange. Just say, hey, that's normal. Okay, y'all didn't want to say it. That's all right. The Bible says uh, it's a common experience. There is no temp. I'm, I'm in 1 Corinthians 10, chapter, verse number 13. It's a long verse, but you ought to memorize it. There has no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. It's not abnormal, it's just common to man. But God is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. Oh, folk, call Jesus, my friend. Call Jesus when you feel like you have run out of energy. You have been exasperated. When, when you feel like you are exhausted and you just at your wit's end, call Jesus, my friend. Call Jesus. But I didn't finish that verse in Zechariah. I didn't finish it. It's blessing my soul. For the Lord himself says, they shall call on my name, and I will hear them. I will say, it is my people. And they will say, the Lord is my God. Ah, that is a blessing. The Lord says, I will claim you as my people. I will wrap my arms around you. I will be there to console you. Baby is crying. What do you do normally? You pick them up and you try to console them. And, and you try to find out what's wrong, baby. What's wrong, baby? And the poor baby can't talk. I love you mothers. I, I love you mothers. You, 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 
I don't know what kind of instinct God put in you. What? How do you determine what's wrong with me? How do you determine? I mean, you check my diaper. <laughs> You try to remember the last time you fed me and you, and I, and I just, yeah, yeah, yeah. how do you, God has somehow equipped y'all with a gift that we men, most of us don't have. When that boy, teenager, got sick in the field, his father said to his servants, take him to his mother. We fathers sometimes don't even have time to deal with. Look, boy, we out here working. We ain't got time to be get sick. We just have to press past it and got to be a man. And the little boy said, yeah, but I'm sick. I got a headache. I, I can't go no far. Take him to his mother. That's the reason I, oftentimes I said to my wife, happy Mother's Day. I don't wait till second Sunday in May. All during the year, I be said, happy Mother's Day. Because she's always into my children's business. Man. There my baby daughter is here in the choir. She'll tell you. Soon as she said, hello, where are you? Oh, no. Let me say. My children are grown. You don't ask them where they are. Yeah, yeah. she's all in there. But they've gotten so used to it, they just go ahead and tell her. Lord have mercy, Jesus. But it's amazing that we can have problems and situations that we ourselves don't even know what's causing it. I mean, some, uh, my good friend in Buffalo, uh, he said, he said last week that I don't feel well. He said, but repeatedly he said, but I'm not sick. I don't want to characterize what I'm dealing with as a sickness. I don't want you to think I'm sick now. Uh, no, no, I'm, not, I'm not claiming sickness, but I just don't feel well. Has anybody ever been there? Well, well, you just cannot explain why you don't have the energy to get up and do like you used to do. You just don't feel well. Lord, have mercy. And when we don't know, we don't know what's going on with us that's making us feel bad. I mean, this is after he's been to the doctor and they've taken all the vitals and all the, the various tests to see what's wrong, and yet they can't find anything abnormal, and still he does not feel well. Yeah, I hear God. He says, I will be your God. You will be my people. I will care for you. As a father, a loving father would care for his child or a loving mother would care for her child. I will wrap my arms around you and you will declare boldly that I am your Lord and your God. Yeah. Hebrew says, I will declare boldly that the Lord is my helper. He is my helper. Folk, I just want to encourage you to call Jesus. Now, somebody said, you, you should not have to encourage people to call Jesus. They ought to just know to do that. No, no, the devil himself wants you to feel like you are independent, that you really don't need anybody else, that, that you can deal with anything. There's nothing you cannot deal with. See, he wants you to have that self-dependency. But, folk. I am not sufficient of myself to think anything as of myself, for my sufficiency is of God. And everybody needs to come to your wit's end. You need to come to that uh, final determination 
that uh, you're going to trust in the Lord with all your heart. You're not going to lean to your own understanding. In all of your ways, what are you going to do? And then what will he do? He will direct your path. Lord, help us to call upon the name of the Lord. St. Matthew 1, 21, poor Joseph needed some help because he thought his wife had cheated on him. But while he was thinking of how to put her away privately, the angel of the Lord came to him in Matthew 1, 21 and says, and she shall bring forth a son. And thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Joseph do not hesitate any longer to take Mary as your wife. She is a precious, pure, innocent jewel that God himself is using to bring salvation to the world. You're going to call this name Jesus because the name Jesus actually means salvation of the Lord. The one that saves. Yes, and so you're going to call his name Jesus, and he's going to save his people from their sins. Their sins, their sins. Sins are like the cancer within that will ultimately destroy its carrier. Yeah, it's like a cancer within sins, and the Lord's going to save us from our sins because the wages of sin. In other words, sin is, a, is an employer. Sin employs you to carry out acts that are displeasing to the almighty God. And it's wages. He pays wages now. He's, he, he'll give you a salary. And your wages, death. Lord, how amazing. Her mercy. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I tell you that Jesus Christ is pro-life. He is all about life. He says, I am come, the, the devil has come, the thief has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. The enemy does not want to see life continue. The enemy is out to steal life, kill life, destroy life. But I am come. St. John 10 and 10. That you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Folk, you cannot get on the bandwagon with everybody in the world because the people of the world, they're on the broad way. And broad is the way that leads to eternal damnation. Are you with me? Somehow we got to get on the straight and narrow way that leads us to life eternal. Amen. Amen. And so don't go with what's popular. You go with whatever God says. Call Jesus, my friend. Call Jesus. Ask him to help you. Yes. Ask him to comfort and strengthen you. Amen. He's willing and able. To aid you, and he will carry you through. Amen. And so it is. So it is. Uh, uh, sin. Sometimes people think, oh, you're trying to take my pleasure away. Please. We're trying to take your cancer away. No, no, no. I went to the University of Illinois. Biology was my major. I graduated with a BS degree in biology as the major, chemistry as the minor, okay? Yeah, yeah, I majored in biology, minored in chemistry, ended up in ministry. Okay, that's the way it goes, okay. But, but Dr. Clee took a liking to me. I don't know what possessed that dear old white lady to like me, little black boy, only black boy in her class. But she took a liking to me and took me to one of her professional seminars that they were having on campus. And she says, they're gonna show a movie and do a lecture on 
the development of medicine to combat cancer growth. James, would you like to come with me? Well, sure, doctor. I'd love to come with you. And there I went with her, Charlie, and she was like, Mama, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, went with her and sat down with all these professional people and people who were majors and uh, going for advanced degrees in medicine. Uh, the, the lecture room was pretty full, and I sat there and watched the movie. And one of the things that stood out is that they had discovered what would kill cancer cells. They had advanced that far. We're talking about something that is 50 years ago. I don't know where the time went, folk. I don't know where the time went. What did just yesterday that I went to school? Where's team? What did just a few days ago we were going to school? The two of us, we went to the same school. Many times my father picked us up after service. He come by over there on Halston to pick both of us up, to take her home and then take me. Lord, have mercy. 50 years, where did that go? I, I should not talk like that because people may not think that you're that old. Girl, uh, please forgive me. <laughs> Please forgive me. I'll try to watch my mouth next time. <laughs> but oh my goodness. We're talking about over 50 years ago that they had already discovered what would kill cancer cells. They said that the only problem we have is that when we kill the cancer cells, we also kill the person. <laughs> now what kind of medicine is this? Wait a minute. Lord have mercy. But the idea, there's a lot of work put into how to kill the cancer, how to get rid of it, how to stop it from growing. Because cancer left unattended just by nature will grow. And they showed us the picture, a, a, a live picture of the cells uh, growing and those cancer cells, they multiply and multiply, they multiply, and they grow so fast, they grow fast, and they attach themselves to parts of your body. Cancer cells. Uh, and now, now, it gets really rough when it attaches to your skeletal bone. You know, your bone that goes down your back, yeah, yeah. somewhere down that bone, the little cell gets into one of those little holes. It starts off real small, but once it gets in there and gets situated, then it starts to grow, and it becomes a very hard knot. Hard. And it grows, and it expands, and it's now pressing against your spinal cord. That's your nerve. Anybody ever had a nerve that was... Something was pressing against that nerve. I tell you, you will say, ouch, quickly. Folk, there's a difference between pain and an ache. You can tolerate an ache. Oh, oh, shake it off. <laughs> you can tolerate an ache. But a pain, ooh, it'll make you act up. <laughs> It'll make you bend. It, it, oh, let me. Has anybody been to a, a, the, the dentist and they did not quite numb your gum as much as they should have? And they started drilling and you're trying to hold on, but after a while they hit that nerve and you just about jumped out of that chair. I'm telling you, a pain will make you jump. It'll make you reflect. Oh God, help us, Jesus. Cancer, it will grow and cause not just a mild discomfort, but it will after a while cause great excruciating pain that is almost, it is unbearable. And that's the reason they try to give you strong medications. I went to visit a member at the hospital, and uh, the doctor had no, no sensitivity training. I keep saying that in case anybody here, you, you're dealing in the medical field, please help me train the, the medical staff to have some sensitivity training. 
And so while I was standing there with my member, he comes in. And I noticed that uh, when I was walking, because whenever I go in the hospital and I'm going to visit someone, I'm taking note of the signs as I go that gives me a clue as to what section is this. If it says oncology, I kind of know what that's about. If it says delivery, I'm in the wrong section. <laughs> <laughs> you know, prenatal care, right? Yeah, uh, but, but anyway, I, I, I read my signs. And I was surprised to see pain department. They have a whole section called pain. And so the doctor walks in. He says, how you doing, Miss uh, YZ? And, 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 and she says, oh, well. Uh, I'm doing okay. He says, well, if you have pain, let me know. Just push the button. You know, they have that little button. And we'll come, and we have what you need to relieve you of pain. Now, so far, he's doing pretty good. But then he says, but your underlying condition that's causing the pain, there's nothing else we can do for that. That's going to kill you. <laughs> he needed sensitivity training. He didn't have to say it that way. All he had to do was say, you know, what you're dealing with is very serious, and we are working with you to do all that we can do to make you as comfortable as possible, as long as possible. And, 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 and if you have any pain or discomfort, just give us a ring and leave it alone. He didn't have to say, and this will kill you. How's that going to help heal me? Yeah, that, that, that's that's. No, I had another member, another member, and she said, Pastor, that nurse told me that I'm dying. Yeah, yeah, I had another member who, who told me that. And lo and behold, the lady walks in while I'm there. There she is. She's, oh, Lord. Oh, my goodness. You don't say things like that. And the poor little lady was startled because she didn't, she didn't think that she that the patient was paying much attention to what she was saying. You know, sometimes people think you're so sick you don't hear anything. Folk, I come to tell you that I heard another story of a lady who woke up out of a coma and sued the hospital and won. Because she could identify voices even though she couldn't talk at the time. She actually won the case. Lord have mercy. Cancer is something that if unattended, it will grow and it will just tear you apart. And after a while, you will have no resistance. And usually you don't die from cancer. Oh, it got real quiet. Yeah, you don't usually die from cancer. So don't scare me about cancer because you don't usually die from cancer. You usually die because it compromises your immune system and pneumonia sets in. And it's the pneumonia that kills you. Are you with me? Lord, so, so, so now that tells me that maybe the solution to this cancer thing is to build such a strong immune system that the immune system can fight from within against the cancer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So feed the good cells and, and, and make them strong so that you can have some internal fight fighting power against the cancer. And that's, that's really what the Lord is, uh, is saying. He's saying, now you're not going to stop uh, sin from coming your way because uh, all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And sin is going to come your way. And you're going to be tempted of the things that you're, you came out of. And, 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 and sin is just in your members, in my members, dwelleth in my flesh dwelleth no good thing I mean so it's already there you already got the seeds in you but you can win you can overcome uh huh there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. 
who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. And so we're constantly overcoming the law of sin and death through the power of the law of the Holy Spirit that is in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now, ain't that good news? Somebody ought to shout, I'm an overcomer. There are some things that are troubling me right now. Some things that are not going well. But I am a, an overcomer. Through Jesus Christ my Lord, I can overcome anything. For I can do all things. Through Christ who does what? Strengthens me. Oh Lord, I feel deliverance in this room. Hallelujah. You who are listening to me, wherever you're listening from, God bless my faithful Mississippi listeners. God bless my North Carolina listeners, my Atlanta, Georgia listeners. God bless you in New York. God bless you in New Jersey. God bless you in Maryland. God bless you in D.C. Yeah, I got a member in D.C. God bless every one of you. I come to tell you that wherever you're hurting, I feel deliverance in this place. We're not going to walk around pitiful. We look bad enough. We look bad enough. But I'm not going to walk around pitiful as if I don't have any help. Call Jesus, my friend. Call Jesus. What's his name? What's his name? What's his name? You keep doing that, you're about to get a deliverance. You're about to get a healing. Hallelujah. Somebody wants, you want that deliverance, don't you? Take 30 seconds and do nothing but call that one name. Come on. Come on and call them. Wherever you are. Call them in your office. Call them on your job. Call them in your bedroom. Call them in your dining room. Call them wherever you are. Call his name. He's your savior. He's your healer. He's your deliverer. One more time. Jesus. Hallelujah. because I'm not going to be able to finish this, so you might as well stand on your feet. You might as well stand on your feet and give the Lord a praise offering right now. Hey!
Jesus is not trying to take your joy away. He's trying to give you joy. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. And so he's trying to save your life. So you got to be willing to give up every sinful way. Lay aside every sin. Every weight and sin that does so easily beset you. Lay it aside and say, Lord, I'm with you. I go with you all the way. Folka, my wife was with me last this past Friday, two days ago. I spent seven hours at the University of Chicago Hospital. They looking for something. They just keep right on looking. And what I tell them, just go right on. Just keep right on looking. And I had to go through the scans and the dye and that special drink you take. And I had to go through all of that because they are, they're looking. They're looking for something. They want to see uh, if there's any metastasis, uh, any metastasizing of the, of the cancer cells. Are they... Is anything spreading, anything getting uh, all up in your bones and getting up into your system? I just, they're looking for something. Took a while, the doctor sent the resident doctor in first to ask me a bunch of questions, and then he finally came in and sat down and looked at me. He says, your scans don't show any growth. Come back in three or four more months and we're going to look again. They're yet looking for something. Folk, my life is in the Lord's hand. And when I go to the hospital, I don't go there scared. Nervous. Lord, I wonder what they're going to tell me. Oh, God, please let them not be able to see anything. I said, Lord, Come on, that is crazy. No, I want them to see everything that they can see and then tell me what you see. Because the Lord that I serve is above everything that you see. Are you with me? I'm not trying to pray, Lord, let them miss it so they won't see it. No, let their eyes be wide open and their minds working properly. Tell me exactly what you see. Well, can you take Yeah, I can take it. They're not going to fall out here on this floor. You're not my God. I only have one God. And he's helped me thus far. He'll help me. Somebody said, well, now, Pastor, how long will this last? Well, one day I'm going to sleep and I'm not going to wake up. No, 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 that's just a reality. One day I'm going to sleep and I'm not going to wake up, okay? So one day I will lay my burdens down. Lay down my sword and shield. You know, steady war no more. But that's not going to happen until the Lord says, come home. Are you with me? And when the Lord says, come home, I say, even so, come Lord Jesus. Not afraid of that fight of Mormon because every day I'm living to see Jesus when he comes. Amen. I want you, I want you to make sure that your life is in order. That you maintain faith in God that you put your whole trust, all of your cares in his hand. Because this life that we're now living on this side of death is so minuscule. It's so short, so small compared to the life that we live on the other side of death, which is eternity 
thousands of years of living we got to do on the other side of death. And I just want to make sure that when I go through that door called death, that the angels are waiting for me to swoop me up into the bosom of the Lord. If you have not surrendered your life to Jesus, then when death comes, thank God for the thief on the cross who at the last few minutes of his life says, Master, when you get in your kingdom, I have not made reservations and here I am just about to go through this door and, 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 and I know that I'm I'm going to get what I deserve, and that's eternal damnation. But master, can you remember me? Is there any way you can reserve a spot for me? I don't have time to work on the usher board. God bless you, ushers. I don't have time to sing in the choir, work with the deacons or the ministers' alliance. But if you could just remember me and the master, Jesus, stop dying long enough to say this day, today, will you be with me in paradise? For if you go through that door, I'm not going to see two thieves when I get there. Only one of the two. Because the other one wouldn't repent. And when he went through that door, he had no angels to take him anywhere. So the demons of hell just swooped him in. And dragged him down into hell fire where he will be forever. Lord have mercy. I want you to make sure that you've made your calling and election sure. Make sure that you have reservations through Jesus Christ. Only Jesus Christ can reserve a place for you in heaven. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. And so Jesus says, come here. Come here. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I'm meek and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus says, come. I want you to stretch your hands out towards me right now and say, Lord Jesus. Come on, wherever you are, say, Lord Jesus. Here I am in your presence. I open the door of my heart to you. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Be my Lord and my Savior. From this day forward, I cleave to you. I embrace you. I clinch you. Lord Jesus, here I am claiming you as my Lord and my Savior. And I'll love you. I'll praise you. I'll serve you all the days of my life. Thank you for hearing my prayer. Put those hands together and give them a praise offering. Thank you for hearing my prayer. Lord, I commend these to you, to the word of your grace. You're able to build them up, give them an inheritance among all those who are sanctified through Jesus Christ our Lord. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. I tell you, folk, you surrender your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to be happy. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. For his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. You're going to be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth your fruit in its season. Its leaf also shall not wither, and whatever you do, will prosper. Do I have any believers in this house? So it is. I want you to go with God and God will go with you. Uh, my elder, uh, Patterson, is going to come and he's going to take you further into accepting the Lord Jesus and membership in the church here at St. Luke. And, and my prayers are with you continually. I've only just begun. I didn't even get past the first half of my first page of my sermon. I, I've only, this is only the first part. Folk, I'm coming back next Sunday, Lord, be my helper. And please come on Wednesday night. 
on Wednesday night, I need to get on Psalm 19. Start reading Psalm 19. By now, if you've been reading through the Bible with me, you ought to be up to Psalm 19. By this week, this week, go ahead and meditate on Psalm 19. And on Wednesday night, I want to start my series on Psalm 19. Amen? Amen. Come on, let's thank God for Bishop Austin. What a wonderful word. Called Jesus, my friend, called Jesus. We're so grateful for those who've joined us online. We just love you. Praise God for you. Uh, God is at work both in the sanctuary and on the internet. And we're praying that God will continue to bless you, keep you, and um, make his face shine upon you. Hey, if you are looking for a church home, we love you, and we'd love for you to be a part of who we are. We've got people standing in the sanctuary right now. Uh, thank God for the ministers and the missionaries who are standing with me right now. Um, we want you to know that St. Luke is a wonderful place for you to grow, for you to develop, and uh, we'd love for you to be a part of who we are. Maybe you can't make it to 914 North Orleans, but you can join online and we will be in contact with you. So there's a button at stlukekojic.com, stlukekojic.com. Click that button and we'll get you information. We will reach out to you if you'd like to join the church or if you would like to accept Jesus as your savior. Uh, you've just prayed along with Bishop Austin, so you prayed that prayer. Let us know so we can get you ample information. Again, stlukekojic.com, stlukekojic.com. Amen. Hey, and for those who are in the sanctuary, maybe you'd like to join uh, the church. Uh, Bishop would love for you to come. He would love for you to come. We would love for you to come. And so um, please stand, come forward, and we want to throw our arms around you, throw your lot in with us as we impact this world for Jesus Christ. If you're here, we'd love for you to come at this time. Come at this time. Amen? Amen? Amen. Praise God. We just thank God for you. Come on, let's give the Lord one more hand of praise. It's just good to be here, isn't it? And to magnify the Lord for who he is and what he's done. Um, we're going to prepare our hearts for communion. We're so grateful to have Bishop David Daniels with us today. Uh, we love him. Appreciate him so much. He's going to come and uh, read scripture for us today. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, beginning at verse, beginning at verse 23. For I received of the Lord that which is delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after the same manner, he also took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye. As often as you drink of it, do it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death until he comes. May the Lord be a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of God's word. So we unveil the tabernacle. The veil theologically represents the removal of the flesh. Flesh is always a hindrance to the spirit and we must overcome the flesh. And every obstacle, everything that's between us and the savior, take it out of the way. Same night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he break it. He break it. And he said, take, eat. This is my body. You may eat of your bread. 
God, we thank you for this bread, for this cup, sanctified to your glory. And let it be healing to our bodies, to our minds, our souls. God, let there be miracles that you will work in the next few minutes. Do a new thing in these bodies. In the name of Jesus. Mm. Thank you. By your stripes, we are healed. We are healed. We are healed. Then you took the cup. So this is the New Testament in my blood. Drink ye all of it. Drink in faith. Drink in faith. Believe God has already done it. Go ahead and praise him. Go ahead and praise him. Come on, y'all. Let's sing it. Jesus came and did it just for me. Come on. Let's lift it up, everybody. Just for me. Just one more time. Just for me. Just for me, Jesus came and did it just, just for me, just for me, just for me, Jesus came and did it just for me come on clap your hands give God one more praise hallelujah yes, sir.
somebody's getting a breakthrough right now. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you, Bishop Boston, for your message today. Uh, call on Jesus, my friend. Call on Jesus. Sometimes that's all we can do is call on Jesus. Amen. It's an opportunity for all of us to participate in our service. It's offering time, and I want to encourage you to give your tithes and offering today on this very first Sunday. If you're watching online, various ways that you can give electronically. If you're here in the sanctuary, um, you can use your debit or credit card. Sister Latricia Dixon is in the west window. Sister Celeste Baker is in the east window. You, can be, you may begin to line up. If you need an envelope, I believe the ushers have passed them out, but if you need one, just raise your hand, and the deacons are able to make change for you at this time. I'm going to pray, and then the deacons are going to serve you. Amen? God, we thank you for this day, July, Sunday, July the 3rd, a new day, a day that you brought us together to experience your love and your mercy and your grace. We thank you for sending your son, Jesus. Father, we thank you for the sunshine that's on the outside here in Chicago, letting us know your great, sending us your grace and mercy. Father, we just continue to love you. We honor you. We come at this time with our tithes and our offering. God, we know that you're going to continue to bless us. You've already been a blessing to us. So we come bringing our sacrificial giving at this time, Lord God. Father, we just ask that even those that are not able to give, that you would continue to allow them to give the next time, Lord God. Provide what they need, Lord God. God, and we'll endeavor to use this offering for your glory, for the benefit of doing ministry here on earth, near and far. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. Just raise your envelope and repeat after me. Lord, we offer unto you our gifts. Amen. All right, the deacons are going to serve you at this time and I believe um, we have some announcements missionary Clara Bruins going to come with announcements give God another hand of praise for that word coming from Bishop Austin the announcements are as follows let's celebrate happy birthday to our very own Lady Bernesta T. Austin. And that will take place on Sunday, July the 10th. That's next Sunday. After the 8.45 a.m. worship service and after the 12.15 p.m. worship service, feel free to bring your cards and gifts of love to honor our Lady Austin, our First Lady. God bless you. The St. Luke Church of God in Christ Mother's Board and Helpers are going to have a bazaar. Shopping, food, music, fellowship, and fun. This will take place on Saturday, July the 9th. I believe that's this coming Saturday. And it will last from 10 a.m. to 5 to 3 p.m. And that's here at the St. Luke Church of God in Christ. The vendors are $25. Please come out and share and help them as they have this bazaar. God bless you. Now at this time, I want you to put your hands together and give God a hand of praise as we receive our brother, Dwight Grady, with a special announcement. Govern yourselves accordingly. It's a way of life, folks, when you're as short as I am. <laughs> well, I want to speak just for a moment on service and volunteering. Now, we just had an election, and in the past, we had a congresswoman named Shirley Chrisholm, and she defined service like this. She said, service is the rent we pay for the privilege of living on this earth. Service is the rent we have to pay for living on this earth. So as members of St. Luke, we serve our church. How? Through ministry 
and volunteering. Now, our members at this church that perform ministry in the church and in the community are pretty well known to us. You know, we have ushers, deacons, choir members. They're well known. However, we have volunteers that do service that we really don't know at all. They perform a lot of things like clerical duties, transportation assignments, food service assistance, excuse me. They do maintenance, they perform housekeeping tasks, and they do beautification projects inside and outside this building. So the ministry they do really helps the church at large, and without them, our church wouldn't be able to function efficiently. So the Word of God tells us to render honor to whom honor is due. And we have some members here who volunteer, and St. Luke is going to honor them. So on Saturday, July the 16th at 11 a.m. in the Addie Austin, Luke Austin Fellowship Hall, we're going to recognize and honor our volunteers with a delicious brunch. There will be a brief program, but we want all of you to come out and celebrate these volunteers. So remember, it's Saturday, July the 16th at 11 a.m. Thank you. All right, is everyone given that would like to give? All right, thank you. <laughs> thank you. All right. Well, we're near the end of the service. I'm going to bring back our, our pastor at this time. Well, God bless every one of you. Uncle Rudy, bless you, sir. God bless you. So, Sir Hazel. I thought I saw your son from California here. Yeah, I tell you, he was so nice. He says, oh, we'll take care of Marcus, because we had Marcus with us last year. And they took him up into their apartment and took care of, of course, they, he and his wife, they had lunch with us at the Houston restaurant. Yeah, I was, I was so glad to see him. I didn't get a chance to speak to him, but let him know I acknowledged them, all right? Thank you, thank you. It's wonderful, wonderful. Our children move far away, but God allows us to, to intersect with them from time to time. Oh, yeah, he was at the church where I, I ministered that Sunday. So uh, God bless his little heart. And uh, God bless every one of you as this is July the 4th weekend. What does that mean? He said it means ribs, and somebody else said firecrackers. <laughs> so, folk, I know I was reared here on the north side of Chicago. I was reared in the hood, but I have a hard time distinguishing between a firecracker and a gun. I mean, that's fireworks, you know. Pop, 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 you know. I'm listening. I'm trying to see, is that a firecracker? Or is that actual from a firearm? Lord have mercy. So, folk, please uh, take care of yourselves. Be cautious where you go. Don't hang out with folk who don't mean anything. Yeah, yeah, because... They may be aiming for somebody else, but they hit you, right? Just, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to scare you. I'm trying to prepare you. That I want you to make sure that you take the Lord along with you everywhere you go. Every holiday, I, I'll say it again, every holiday is a holy day. And you don't have time to become carnal and let down your guards Oh, this is a holiday, so I'll just do whatever. No, you don't do whatever. You are a soldier on duty at all times. And I want you to make sure that you honor the Lord all day tomorrow and all this weekend. Honor him wherever you are. 
and the Lord be with you and be with your families as some of you will gather with other people. It's a great time. I used my holidays when I was single. I used my holidays to go visit the sick. I used my holidays to go visit somebody who could not get out and enjoy life as I. I visit them and do my ministerial duty, then I would go and maybe treat myself to something later on that evening, but I wanted to make sure that I did ministry. So I want to encourage you, don't be locked up in your room all alone Say, this is a holiday, but I ain't got nothing to do. Please, it's too much work to do. The harvest is plenteous. The laborers are few. Get yourself busy. Serve one another and then treat yourself. It's all right to treat yourself after you have served. The labor is worthy. Yeah, yeah. So uh, treat yourself afterwards. But make sure you call somebody. Get a phone number. Call somebody and let them know that you're thinking of them. Amen. Stand on your feet, everybody. What am I missing? Sarah Bird. Dan passed away. Sarah Bird's brother, one of the brothers that she was taking care of in Nebraska, passed away. We're praying for Sarah Bird. We're praying for Elder Tom Murray, his nephew in Detroit, Michigan, who he's, we've been praying for, passed away yesterday morning. And so we're praying for Elder Tom Murray and the loss of his nephew, his oldest sister's baby son. I believe that's correct. And we're praying for all who've suffered loss. All who've suffered loss. That God will comfort and give strength. It just seems like I'm missing something. But that's okay. We'll just have to pick it up next time. I have not heard... Uh, Ella Hicks pray for a while. Can you give him a clean mic? Give him a clean mic so he can pull his mask down because his wife is watching him. <laughs> yes, yes. Close it up. Yes. Dear God, we thank you. Hallelujah. We thank you because you're God. Lord, there's nobody like you, O oh God, and we thank you right now, O oh God. Lord, we thank you for our pastor. We thank you for his family. We thank you for our church family. Lord, we thank you for all that you've done. Lord, if we had 10,000 tongues, we could not thank you enough. Thank you, O oh God, because you blessed us. You love us, O oh God. We thank you for the message today, O oh God. Lord, we pray that you continue to bless us, O oh God, as we go to our different homes, our different places, God. Lead God and direct us in whatever it is you have us to do, O oh God. Bless us right now, O oh God, and keep us in the center of your will. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Amen.